I love that you mentioned the Azusa Street Revival because it's been on my heart. Um, we're recording this, not knowing exactly when this will be released, but we're recording this in the midst of, um, well, a few weeks ago, um, George Floyd. The video went out of George Floyd with a white police officer with his knee on his neck and crying out, I can't breathe, and, and then passing away, and that becoming a rallying cry for awakening of justice and um, awareness around racial injustice, particularly with black lives and uh, just a profound move. And then I keep thinking in this time about how God poured out his spirit um, on a black man. Mm. And that led to one of the biggest revivals in history. Wondering if you would be up for taking some time just to help serve me as a, as a white pastor, just as I'm trying to make sense of the conversation going on, going on around me right now. Are you up for that? Absolutely. How are you making sense of the times we're in? You know, how are mm-hmm. you, how are you, maybe actually the question I'll have, sorry, how, how are you experiencing it personally? Mm-hmm. It's a good question. And before I forget, I just want to touch on the whole Azusa thing that God did use William Seymour, a one-eyed black man, descendant of slaves. But what I love about Seymour's story was that this was a man who had no bitterness. Hmm. Zero bitterness. I mean, I, I just, I think last year I read a, a book um, actually, uh, Pastor Brent Cantal on your father-in-law recommended this book to me. Shout out, um, Pops in Law. Yeah, sh- shout out, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, Pastor Brent had said, hey, you know, have you read uh, this book in Azusa? And I was like, no, but I, I kind of gave him the the impression of like, I read a lot of books on Azusa Street, I don't need one more. But he's like, no, 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 listen, you, you have this one is different. Like, you have to read this one. And so I took him up on it and I bought it and it was different. Um, because it really described Seymour's background and the, the type of environment he would have grown up in. That man should have been the most bitter man, you know, around. But he had no bitterness and he had no anger. Uh, to the degree that he heard about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and he knew he needed more. And so he would sit outside uh, because they wouldn't let him into the, cl- the Bible school because he was oh. black. So he would sit outside and listen at the door. That, that's as close as they, as they would allow him to get. While this white teacher taught white students and the, the, the black student, who isn't even really a student, was allowed to sit at the door and listen. Well, how many people do you know today that would humble themselves so low? You know, that would have that kind of hunger that whatever it takes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through all of this humiliation because I want this that bad. And now it feels like, oh, got to be careful here. Um, now it feels like what we want is uh, payback. And we have to be sure that justice doesn't equal vengeance. We have to go after justice, but we can't go after vengeance. And I don't expect anybody who's not a Christian to do that. I think if you're not a believer in Jesus and your heart has not been transformed, listen, I understand why you want vengeance. You know, I watched uh, George Floyd's murder, and I call it a murder. I watched it, and I was angry. And I would say, you know, in some private conversations, I've uh, intimated some non-pastoral opinions about what should happen with those officers. I love that line. <laughs> some non-pastoral language. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so I get that, and I honestly, uh, part of me would say. I can say a part of me is vengeful uh, if I let myself go there. But as a believer in Jesus, I now have a higher standard. And I think what God has been impressing upon me is you can be angry at the injustice, but to have any sense of judgment against that police officer is non-Christian. So I, I think as believers, as, as black believers, as African believers, and I could talk to you for a long time about uh, racist experiences I've had that have struck fear in my heart. I can talk to you about prejudiced Christians for a long time. We could have that discussion. Um, I do have those experiences as well. But as believers, we are called to heal. And justice is about reconciliation. Justice mm-hmm. is about healing. Vengeance is about payback. It's about retribution. So um, when I think about William Seymour, I think it's an apt example to pull from the pages of history because his humility and his hunger to sit at that door for them to tell him you can't come in but he still had value for what they were teaching even though they were clearly racist prejudiced people i think that's the only way that the azusa street 
uh, they, they said a revival, they said of it that the color lines were, were erased in the blood. Um, that's what they say about the Azusa Street Revival. I think the only way that that could have happened was because you had somebody leading it who had every right to be angry, to be bitter, and to be vengeful, who said, no, I want God, and I want what God wants more than I want my payback. And so because of that, black, white, Chinese, Mexican, uh, Americans to all over the world were all able to experience this outpouring. And still to this day, the Pentecostal movement is still one of the fastest growing movements in the world. That's 114 years ago. So, um, you know, timing is timing is important. And, you know, the right time to maybe say this wasn't right after George Floyd was murdered. You know, I don't think anybody would appreciate it that. But as believers, I think the tone and the conversation is now changing to what do we do about it? And I think what we do about it has to start with the example of um, William Seymour. And it has to start with, yes, there are prejudiced people in the church. It is true. Yes, there may be even be racist people in the church. But if we can begin to see each other as brothers and sisters and start there, um, I think that we can be the voice of healing.